With your help, we can continue to fight for freedom. This is not possible without your generosity. Join our quest for the truth and our freedom. Simply visit www.realitycheck.radio forward slash donate to make a difference today. Now it's time for Cam's Buddies. This week, we'll find out what they think about Winston Peters' State of the Nation speech and the media reaction to it. My producer has them all lined up and ready to go, so let's go now to Cam's Buddies. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Miles. Good to have you back. Good afternoon, Cam. How are you this afternoon? I'm always a box of birds. Uh, just uh, got off interviewing Winston Peters, so, uh, you know, it's a whole heap of fun when you're interviewing him. Speaking of Winston yep. Peters, he made a speech, a State of the Nation speech on the weekend, and the media reported it as him saying he was comparing co-governance to the Holocaust in Nazi Germany. What are your thoughts on the speech and the media reaction to it? Well, I didn't listen to it. I had a read of it. I'm still applauding, actually. Um does that make me a Winston a file? Yes, it does. But actually, everything he said made a lot of sense. And I'm really pleased that he had the chutz par to stand up and say it. Now, you're a bit of an expert on German military and German history. Uh, I won't go into yeah. too much deal, detail about precisely what you're an expert on. Do you think he there was yeah. anything wrong with what he was saying? Not at all. I mean, goodness me, everything today is just like, oh, my goodness, you know, this is, uh, he might feel upset, they might feel upset. Good Lord. I mean, these people need to rein it in and they need to understand that they are the ones with the problem, not Winston Peters. Winston Peters is trying to get across a message of how the country needs to change. And I, for one, applaud that. Good on him. And um, let's be honest, he's a smart politician. He knows darn well how to make the uh, media cycle, or should I say how to dominate the media cycle or the news cycle or whatever you want to call it. And he's doing just that. I think, well done, Winston. You're bringing the concerns forward. Yeah, I've, um, I've been sent a little image um, about the Holocaust and, and Nazi Germany, and it starts off by saying it didn't start with gas chambers. It started with one party controlling the media, one party controlling Correct. the message, one party designing what is truth, one party censoring speech and controlling the opposition, one party dividing yeah. citizens into us versus them and calling on their supporters to harass them. It started when good people turned a blind eye and let it happen. And when I saw that, I thought, yep. you know what? We've seen that. We saw that between 2020 yes. and 2023, didn't we? We certainly did. And um, you will uh, recall one day when we decided to have a road trip and uh, left Auckland and saw all the barriers being put up. And on our return, we had like, five kilometre traffic jams on State Highway 1 as the police were trying to check people into Auckland. And I think I said at the time, this isn't New Zealand. This is like Checkpoint Charlie. This is control above and beyond what was needed at the time. And I still to this day shudder to think how close, well, actually, we weren't even close. We were there. We were in a state controlled by one person and a compliant media. And on top of and that, I think they to did Winston cre- Peters. Yeah. Yeah. Winston's did right. They created an us and a them mentality and and set about yes. de- uh, you know, abusing, othering, demonizing, yes. ostracizing the ones that wouldn't comply. It was exactly the Correct. same. And I remember when I wrote about it and said, this is the same thing. I had all these people howling, oh, you can't do that. You can't say that about the, about what happened in Germany. It's nothing like what happened. It's exactly what, exactly what happened. And anybody who's ever been through Yad Vashem, the Holocaust Museum in Jerusalem, 
goes on a pathway through the museum that takes you on those exact same steps. There was little steps all along the way. It didn't start with the gas chambers. It started with the control of the media and a control of one party. Yeah, and look, I mean, Winston's right in his um, State of the Nation when he says, look, we're all the same DNA. Let's actually call an end to this elitism that sprung up around, I don't know, there's all sorts of things. There's elitism around disinformation and, and misinformation. There's elitism around who owns the water. There's all of this elitism. And, you know, if you look at it, Winston's right. It needs to end. It's divisive. It's causing more harm than good. And I believe there is no justification at all. And pin me to the wall and call me a donkey. But if the Treaty of Waitangi is going to be used in this way, then I think the people that are doing it, they are subverting our great nation. And I don't think it is something that should continue. I think it should be nipped in the bud. I think that people have had enough. Well, you know, the media are the ones who have actually misrepresented what Winston Peters said. He never said that co-governance was the same as Nazi Germany. He never said that um, that co-governance was like the Holocaust. He simply said if you have policies that are based on the superiority of one race, that leads to disaster. And he's absolutely right, 100% on that. Correct. And isn't it interesting just a few short days ago, the media were wailing and weeping about how they have lost eyeballs or advertisers' trust. dollars to the extent that they've had, yeah, in trust, to the extent that they've had to close down. Well, now, in a split second, we can see why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, unbelievable. You're 100% right. It, it is exactly the reason why people no longer trust the, the lying legacy media. They just keep telling lies and they expect us to keep sucking it up and, and we see them. We can see what they're about. What? And every time they announce more job losses, there's this thunderclap of hoorays from across the nation that damn near um, deafens me. Yeah, and the other thing is Hipkins needs to pull his head in. Who is he? Is he the head of the nasty party? What's all this pettiness calling Winston a drunk uncle? But I tell you what, Winston had the last laugh. He had a good good old serve on the whining Hipkins, and I think Hipkins got a slap and has his tail between his legs at the moment. That's exactly right, and that's exactly what I just talked about with David Farrer and Simon Lusk. And on that note, Miles, I'll let you get away. I know you're uh, on a timeline, and I've got Lindley waiting to come in, so I'd better leave you. Thanks for your call. Okay, thanks, Cam. We'll catch you next week. Okay. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Lindley. Good to have you back again. Oh, hi, Cam. Yes, good to hear from you. Are you well today? Of course I'm well. I'm always well. Even if I'm not, I'll say oh, well, I'm well. Well, it's not that long ago you were complaining about a sore head, you know. Oh, I didn't well. know what had happened to you. Oh, well, well, I don't know what happened either other than I uh, took a shortcut through the hand basin in the bathroom on the way to the floor. Oh, not wise? No, it hurt like hell, but um, I'm a Comanche. We don't complain about these things. We just get on with it. <laughs> exactly. Now, our topic What's our this subject week, today? Yeah, subject today is uh, Winston Peters' State of the Nation speech. Did you see it? Have you read it? And the reaction I, from the media... Um, the about it. Yes, yesterday um, the headline shot across my iPad um, of the scandalous things that Winston Peters had said. So I thought I'd better listen to it. So yesterday I listened to it twice, as a matter of fact. Um, mm -hmm. And sure enough, um, it was taken completely out of context. They're just fueling the flames of division yet again. Haven't learned a thing. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to try and explain um, to listeners who might might not know this, but I think a lot will, what's actually happening here. Mm -hmm. Go for um, it. Okay. Um, mainstream media um, is embroiled, embroiled in radical left-wing ideology, 
And I think it's not a matter of them not learning. I think they actually think that their duty is to convert New Zealand to their way of thinking. Quote Winston Peters, uh, woke cultural Marxism is what he said. <laughs> and He'll hmm, laugh, don't and you? He's dead job, right. He is dead right, and they're in a job, um, which you all know, where they can make or break people, and they do. They are absolutely shameless and relentless in this pursuit. Now, why don't they change? Well, we can track the source of their so-called news right up to the top, and that's the billionaire mainstream media magnate George Soros, a self-confessed left-wing ideologist who's obsessed with, quote, this is his quote, influencing the minds of the public worldwide. And his chain of influence is carefully crafted right down to the naive journalists at the bottom who unwittingly spew his beliefs. And it's sobering to know that as a young student, he assisted the Nazis to confiscate his fellow Jews' prize assets as they were led away to their awful fate. In the 1998 TV interview, I don't know if you've seen it, <clears throat> when he was asked if he felt any guilt, he replied, no, no, I don't. And this is the man that is the chief source of our news and left-wing government policies as well, which we've suffered for the previous six years. Now, Winston Peters, he's a right-wing fly in the ointment, isn't he? And worse still, he calls the media out. And the yep. Nazi comment, which I've gone over so many times, he basically said the insidious creep of racist co-governance that spread through legislation in the public sector everywhere, he said, and then he went on with some other stuff, and he said it was a race-based theory where some people's DNA was better than another's. And he repeated yep. that, didn't he? That's actually what, what Rari Waititi said. He said, everybody knows that Maori DNA is superior to other DNA. That's what he that's said. That's right. And that, that's what Winston was referring to by those people. And I think he said, and their fellow travellers or something. Yep. Um, anyway, um, then he said, oh, I've seen that philosophy before. I've seen it in Nazi Germany. We all did. Now, I actually take umbrage at Luxon not standing up for this. I think we need to remember it. Does he think that Nazism is a fantasy? And I think we need to remember history so that we can see the beginnings of what may be a repeat performance. And I think that's what Winston actually meant. And I also think if that is what he meant, I think he was dead right. And has Luxon forgotten that thousands of New Zealand men went to war for this cause? My father was one of them on the warship Leander and a Japanese torpedo tore a hole in its side and my father was in amongst the 26 men killed in the boiler room. And if he'd been a couple of metres the other way, he, he would have been one of the 26. Now, had that not been the case, if he had been standing right where the 26 were, well, I wouldn't be here today, would I? Yep. And I think that Luxon and the others uh, who criticise these comments about bringing up the Holocaust and things like that, I think they need to wake up because this did happen and this can easily happen again. And it damn near happened, uh, the beginnings of it, in the COVID thing. You know, people were running around, if they were vaccinated, they were looking hatefully at other people who weren't and calling them out, you know, you could see it in the beginning, in the beginnings of it. Oh, absolutely. Well, I could anyway. No, it was it was like that. That You know, I've been through the Holocaust Museum in Jerusalem, Yad Vashem, and, you know, I had always wondered how the hell did did the Jewish people let this happen to them? And when, mm. I, went, when I went through that uh, museum, I finally understood because what was done in Nazi Germany was exactly what was done here during the pandemic. There were little mm. tiny steps along the way. First of all, they said, uh, okay, look, um, we, we really just want you to wear a little star so that we know who you are. 
or we had vaccine mm. passes, right? So we could know who people were with vaccinated or unvaccinated. Then they said, oh, well, That's you know, right. um, you can't go to those swimming pools, but there's a swimming pool over here you can go to, and only your people with the little yellow stars, you can go to that swimming pool. Or in New Zealand, we said mm. we weren't told that you couldn't go to restaurants, get your hair cut, um, do anything if you were unvaccinated. And then they said, oh, look, if you own a business, we'd really like that to be majority owned by um, Germans. And so um, they then said, well, we're going to take those shares that you've got in that company. And and uh, you can still have a shares. You can still have the job there. It, it's no difference, just a little change. And then after that, of course, they said, "Now we no, you can't, you can't even work here anymore." And oh no, you can't have any shares anymore. And oh, by the way, we need you to move. And it's all these little tiny steps. And all along the way, everyone went, "Oh, okay, well that's not so bad. I can cope with that." And then the next step came as, "Oh, okay, that's not so bad. I can cope with that." And the next minute, they're listening to music on the railway um, siding, mm. leading into the into the showers. You know, and we came, you know perilously close to uh, totalitarianism. It, we did have it to a certain extent, especially when the vaccine passes and the vaccine mandates came about and the lockdowns, show us your papers, all of that sort of behaviour. And so Winston Peters is 100% right in my book that we should learn the lessons of history so that it's never repeated again. And if we start going down the pathway of uh, separating people out because they have special DNA or they had the right ancestors, then that's where we're heading. And he's right on that. I totally agree. And I think his words were carefully chosen. The insidious creep, you know, that's what he said. Yeah. The insidious creep of racist co-governance. So to say that he said co-governance was Nazism was completely incorrect. He said that the insidious creep of racist co-governance. Mm. That's, That's what right. he said. And the headlines, you know, right across the news the next day were all, they were so distorted and, you know, they, Winston Peters is one of the people that they want to break. You know, when I said make or break, they want to break him because he represents the right wing and they hate that, Um they're just okay. pushing an agenda. I mean, we talked about them last week um, that they sort of were stupid and couldn't learn, but I think it's um, it's way above that. I think they think they're the chosen one, you know, to convert the world. Well, you know, Winston's and, not necessarily right wing, but he is conservative and they're very liberal. And so, yeah, they want to bring him down. But, you know, just look at the TV One News headline on Tuesday night. You know, what Winston is claiming he meant, has he been told off by the PM? It's so juvenile. It's so puerile. You know, it's the media oh, who, misre who misreported what Winston said, and they're trying to get him told off. You know, no wonder he's yeah. clapping back at them. Well, and he's doing it very well. Um, and, you know, they had another crack at him for telling lies about the bribery. But, you know, that wasn't a lie. They're the ones that are lying. But yeah. They absolutely were offered the money under conditions. Exactly. You can have it's, this money if you agree to these conditions. That was it. Mm -hmm. Quite simple. I mm -hmm. mean, I, I run a media outlet. I looked into the Public Interest Journalism Fund, took one uh, look at the terms and conditions and said, we won't be applying for this because I refuse to um, adhere to those conditions. And so we didn't. Exactly. And, and I didn't have it. And I took a stand. And, yes, financially it it wasn't good for me or the publication to do that. But we had principles and there's no way we were going to sign those away for a, a few, um, you know, silver coins, which is what the, exactly what the media did. They took the money, they ran the lines, and then they all stand there and go, but it wasn't a bribe and we weren't um, doing what we were told by the government. Well, funny, you got exactly the same viewpoint as the government. You were running propaganda for them. I know, and then they repeat, he's telling lies. You see, they've got this business mastered, you know. First of all, they hypnotise you, and then they um, they keep repeating one-liners all the way through. And they've, um, in Winston Peters, um, and, you know, I know he's a bit mercurial, but they have created a brand for him of um, can't be trusted. 
and they, at some stage in whatever they write, they always have that word in there of can't be trusted, you know, untrustful. Yep. And they've created that brand for him. Exactly. They've created the brand. They, they smear and besmirch him, and then they get upset when he says, um, you know, I'm calling you on your bulldust, and then they get upset and take high umbrage. I can't wait for them all to collapse. They really deserve it. Oh, I really felt, um, you know, when I went over that speech yesterday, I really felt, I thought, actually, it'll be a good thing if they just totally collapsed. They're just so out of order, and they are running roughshod all over New Zealand, as the government did. In fact, they've become the opposition. I mean, before they were the government, now they're the opposition, aren't they? Yep. Well, that's what I think. Because... the media have become the opposition, and you know perhaps we should start well, calling them. That's what I mean. Them, that's what we should start calling them, the media party. But none of them have got the guts to actually stand for election. They, they wouldn't take the rejection, and um, and but but they, they carry on like they are the opposition. Well, that's exactly what I mean. You know, they mm. they literally are the opposition at the moment because they rubbish, um, you know rubbish anybody on on the side of the new new coalition government you know and, you know they they're branding um Luxon as a sort of an overprivileged elitist really and talking about elite why are they calling all these militant uh, or not all these because not many um these militant maoris why are they calling them elitist they're not elite you know, I watched Willie Jackson in an interview a while ago. I was absolutely horrified. Uh, he is not an elite person. E- elite well, means somebody that... He's worth several million dollars, has lots of houses in Auckland. You know, so he's well, not that, poor. Well, that, that's wealth, but it doesn't mean he's elite. Elite is a very special Yeah, I tend to think that they are. Them. I th- tend to think they are because they're in positions of power. They're either high up in iwi or spokespeople for various things, they are the elite of Maoridom, um, and they don't represent the the everyday uh, citizen who happens to be Maori uh, at all. And so they do have an elitist attitude, and that you know they run radio stations and media outlets, and you know all sorts of trusts and all of those sorts of things. They're handling millions and millions of dollars. Um, but whilst you say that's wealth, that kind of bring, puts you into the elite as well. Yeah, well, I suppose if you look at it that way, you could, but um, I guess I'm a little bit old-fashioned, and uh, to see Kiri Takanua there, um, now she's an elite person in my mind. Yes. You know, well, she, no, I agree with you. She, she, yeah, there's a person who's really made a mark on the world. And not and everybody to gets mind, to sing she, at not everyone gets to sing at a at a um, at a prince's wedding, do they? No, they don't. And um, so I don't see um, Willie Jackson. I mean, I just only saw a clip and I stopped and watched it because I thought I might be having to talk about that, but that subject didn't actually come up. But it was a political program on AM Breakfast, which I don't watch, and. It was just terrible. They just laughed and cackled and carried on all the way through it. And I'll tell you what, his command of English is certainly absolutely atrocious, isn't it? Um, it was awful. And I thought, well, it's no wonder nobody wants us, wants to watch it. And goodness knows what he's got to say about the State of the Nation speech. It'd be something really horrible, wouldn't it? Oh, it was funny watching. It was Lloyd Burr, I think his name was, um, That's that you're referencing. He just looked completely flummoxed uh, as Winston Peters poured him back into his bottle. Yes. Right. Well, I Lindley, know. I think we've run out of time. I've got uh, Jack on the line next, and uh, he's waiting. So I'd better say goodbye to you, and we'll talk next week. Okay. See you later, Cam. Okay, Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Jack. Good to have you back. Good to Cam. It's so, earlier tonight. Yeah, a little bit earlier. Paul's away, so you know you get you get a a quicker slot. So you can. Uh, I'm just going to take you away from the the news a little bit, but that's all right. Hey, um, yep. I don't know if you caught up with Winston Peters' State of the Nation speech on the weekend, and then the ensuing uh, debacle in the media as they misrepresented and outright lied about what what he was saying. Um, and what I'm interested in what your thoughts are. 
Well, I didn't hear all of his speech, but like you, or you would have heard all his speech, but I heard all the aftermath of it, and I suppose the guts of it, for want of a better expression. Um, first of all, I have to say I like Winston, so I'm biased in what I say. On the nothing other wrong, hand, nothing wrong with being biased, Winston, Jack. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, Winston would say it like I would say it myself. I'm sick to death of that painted face um, cowboy hat wearing guy in Parliament, you know, being able to say what he likes. And although the press say they reported on it, well, I don't remember that. Um, but the moment Winston says something the same, it's all a huge bonfire. Oh, I but know. I guess you've got to expect that. Well, they're just, they're on, they've got an agenda, and it's not the agenda of actually reporting the news. It's the agenda of trying to get Winston Peters because. Uh, he, he doesn't like the media, and so therefore he's public enemy number one, and away they go. Well, we all understand that. Mm. Um, hmm. but, but I'm totally for what he said. It's true. It is true. And, you know, what I like about Winston is, look at the work that he's done since he's been in there. First of all, he goes overseas and represents us, and he looks good. That's a good start compared with the last person who went over dressed in a sack with a face painted and did nothing at all in my opinion, and she's crooked too with her, you know, the deals that her husband got. She did absolutely nothing in the six years that she was there that I can recall. Winston's done more in the six weeks that he's been running or whatever time it is. Yeah, well, and that's that's exactly right. I think Winston's been on a couple of trips since um, taking over. I'm not sure Nanaima Huda did anything more than one trip. Well, she's been around, he's been around the islands. He's been to Australia several times. He's been to India probably been to other places that I don't know about, but he's been working the whole time. And all the media do is attack him over something that he said that was 100% true. Yeah, what can you say? I'm sorry to be boring, but what can you say about it? Well, it, you know, what you can say is he's, that the media are bent and they need to be gassed. Yeah, but they won't be. Oh, they will. They're doing it themselves. So we just have to live with it. <laughs> Till they all tip over. <laughs> yeah. Well, they won't. I can't understand it. It's just the mind boggles. It does indeed. All right, Jack, thank you for your call today, and uh, we'll talk next week. Sorry it was sweet and, um, and short, but that's all I have to offer. Oh, well, that's that's all we need from you, Jack. Thanks very much for calling in. See you, Cam. Bye. See you, bye. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Jimmy. How are you today? I'm very well, thanks, Cameron. Fired up, mate. Fired up seeing what's happening in, in our democracy. Now, what do you got yeah. for me this week? Yeah, well, I was going to ask you about that. Winston Peters had a State of the Nation address in Palmerston North, though why he did it in Palmerston North, I have no idea, but he still filled the halls, standing room only for the old battler, um, and promptly got Chris Hipkins to react to it. So he got a, got to give Hipkins a slap down, and then the media wailing started. So I'm interested to know what you think about the speech and what the media reaction means and what's it all about? I take this is when Winston compared the Labour Party co-governments to Nazis. Yeah, well, he didn't that's, actually. That's but yeah. Well, look, to, to be honest, the, the use of Nazi in our talk about our democracy is insane. And, you know, what, what the Nazis did was just so appalling. It's just not really even comparable. But the left started calling everyone Nazis and fascists. I mean, the Green Party used to fascists all the time. Like, so for Winston to come back at them and then the media to melt down just shows how pathetic the, the whole media situation is, and that's why they're going broke, mate. Well, what Winston I mean, was it's saying... Just clickbait central. Yeah, clickbait, exactly. But what Winston was saying isn't wrong, is it? He was saying that if you have policies and media and, right. and government all deciding that we're going to prefer someone or a group of people on the basis of race or their DNA, that that ends in disaster. And that he's opposed to that, and he's opposed to it vociferously. And now we've got all these howls of outrage. Um, you, you kind of have to believe that the media are all okay with, you know, a superior DNA and all of that sort of stuff. It's kind of strange. Well, it is, and I completely agree with Winston's sentiment. But the, the, the D, is it DEI or Diversity, uh, diversity, yeah, all of that nonsense. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I mean, that 
that is literally looking at that, you know, and we've got greater problems here, you know, where the, the woke left are forcing stuff on our democracy. Equity means equal outcomes, whereas we want to be looking for equality, which means equal opportunity. Yeah. You know, and I think the West is in great trouble in that respect, actually. Look at Boeing's planes. Well, you know, so, um, Winston called them woke cultural Marxists. Is he wrong? They are. <laughs> He's dead right. They, it's literally cultural Marxism. It's oh. affected us so badly. And all the people in the media believe in it. And fortunately, the voters in New Zealand don't and have rejected it. But they just can't, ex- the media can't accept it. It's really so, puerile okay. and, and nonsensical. I mean, TV One is running a headline, was running a headline on Tuesday night saying, What's Winston, what Winston is claiming he meant, has he been told off by the PM? It, I mean, it's so juvenile. It, it's the media who misrepresented all of this, and now they're trying to get Winston so he gets told off by Luxon. But I could just imagine Luxon, Luxon trying to Luxon. tell him off. <laughs> <laughs> but instead of just Luxon, bark Luxon at him and tell him to Winston sit off. down. <laughs> like yeah, but I think Luxon probably, cause I did see that, but Luxon's probably trying to shut the media up because he's sick to death of them going on. What's, what's Winston saying got to do with Luxon? Well, the, the, the media are going to Luxon saying, well, what do you think about Winston's thing? And, you know, and I mean, Luxon came out <clears throat> and stupidly said it was unhelpful, which is one of the most ridiculous things you can say in politics that something's unhelpful. But, you know, who is it helpful to? Well, it's just not an answer. Eh? You either should say, I don't support it or I do support it, not give a sort of unequivocal, meaningless answer. And this, this is part of Luxon's problem, right? He doesn't really take a stand on anything, because we know where Winston stands and David Seymour stands. In order to stand, yeah. you need a backbone. And Luxon's sort of trying to, trying to impress everyone and impressing no one. He's got to pick, a, pick who he's going well, to support a, here. You know, Christopher Luxon said, Winston Peters' Nazi comparison is not helpful. Well, I can't think of a more ridiculous word in politics than helpful. <laughs> you know, because I tell you what, Winston's statement was incredibly helpful for Winston. It may not be for Luxon, but it was helpful for Winston. <laughs> you know? I mean, I, I completely agree with Winston, don't get me wrong, but just the comparisons to Nazis, it, it, it is pretty strong language, and it set the media off on this tone. Instead of talking about Winston's content, they're just talking about that, and it, we just keep doing that. Well, I guess the media need to do that for clickbait, though. We can't actually have a debate in this country without hyperbole now, you know? I know. It's, Basing it's... policy on race is nuts. It's absolutely insane, and it's going to lead to horrendous outcomes. Oh, it's, it's going to be totally pushed. horrendous. And also, I don't understand the long-term strategy of it. I mean, in, in, let's say 100 years when a lot of, like, 80% of New Zealand has got some sort of Maori ancestry. I mean, huge amount of people got already, you know, their you know, the policy collides with what is already normal, where you just treat everyone, you know, it's going to run out of um, space. You know, who, who's going to be Maori enough, you know? So... I, it's really just it's just a power grab by the socialists, this stuff, to try and enforce socialism into, into our democracy without doing it through the ballot box. Did you see Stuff went and rung up, um, managed to find some band member from Chumba Wumba <laughs> <laughs> to get them to have a whine about it? And, but the funniest thing of all, this is what Winston Peters um, said in the press release. This story has been initiated by a lefty shill reporter who proactively sought to call <laughs> call a num- a member of a former band which disbanded 12 years ago, give their biased appraisal of what was said in my speech and concocted a ham-fisted attempt at a story that does nothing but show how my comments about these sorts of media organisations are correct. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe they did that. But anyway, that's what but, they do. That's what they he, he ends it with, I, if the reporter had any clue of the law and not just some opinionated fake news headline, they wouldn't have bothered publishing this nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other thing that happened that impressed me this week was Winston slapping Chris Hipkin down and then oh, telling him to get drunk on a wine biscuit then taking a packet of wine biscuits into the, into the cup. <laughs> <laughs> like, Winston has dominated the news cycle now for, for five days. On a on a speech that normally would never be reported. I mean, him and his media advisors must be sitting there sniggering into their whiskies 
as they're smoking cigars for a job well done. Well, Winston's defining his age. I mean, he's he's outshone Mahuta as a foreign minister in five months. I mean, he's, yeah. I mean, I guess Mahuta had, she had COVID, but you know, closed borders. But still, he's been to India and he's been to Australia, Around the Pacific, around the Pacific, Pacific Fiji, yeah, Australia, and like. He's, and he's off to China. He's had the Chinese um, foreign minister here recently. I mean, this is his work ethic. And he's slaying all the other parliamentarians on well, the other side, you know. So he, he he's a, really is – either it shows that Winston's either got a great work ethic or the other side is just were, were incredibly lazy. You know? I'm, I'm so glad I voted for him. You, you were an ACT voter, but <laughs> you'll probably start lying about that shortly and saying, yeah, yeah I voted for Winston. <laughs> Well, to be honest, I was having this conversation just recently with someone. I said, if I'd given my vote to Winston, I'd also be very happy. <laughs> but he's impressing a lot of people. The problem Winston has is he has let us down before, and a lot of people really love what he's doing, but they still were a bit cagey about giving him their vote, I guess. That's how I'd see it. Yeah, well, given um, what he's doing at the moment, you know, I'm starting to wonder a couple of things, whether or not he slipped a couple of quid to Chimbawumba so that they could have a moan in the media so he could keep the story going. <laughs> and B, whether or not he knows that there's some polls out um, coming out soon and so he's getting into the media to get a bump in the polls. Well, he's done a beautiful job. He's sucking all the headlines away. And, I mean, National's had a bit with its kicking out the useless tenants and, you know, a bit of media, but it hasn't generated anywhere near the clicks that Winston's stuff has. Well, I, wish, I honestly wish the media would focus on the content of Winston's speech and, and the meaning, like what he's actually talking about, not just the pug words and, and you know, that, that's just the way it is. I don't know how we get that across to the masses. But I just don't know. If, if anyone knew what Winston was talking about, they, it would be really hard for most people to disagree with it. You know, no, even the Mark thing is... King. The thing with Winston, though, now he's got he's got the X thing sorted. He's got the Facebook thing sorted, and that's all that matters. He's bypassing the media. He's issuing press releases, chucking them out on X. Um, he's getting you know thousands of views on his stuff. Uh, uh, what all the while the other media are, are, are gassing themselves with this stuff. And if anyone's listening, you need to get an X account and follow a lot of this on X, because you see just a completely different perspective compared with what you see on our mainstream media. It's not even close to the same. I know, it's and hilarious. And I suspect that across the whole planet, actually. Oh, not we're like, seeing that all the time. We, I mean, uh, Trump's just suffered the same thing. He made a speech about... Yeah, yeah I just, just was going to say the same thing, that, that um, bloodbath yeah, made, comments. Yeah, he made a speech in saying that, you know, that the auto industry is going to suffer a bloodbath if, that, if he's not re-elected and can reinvigorate um, Australian, uh, sorry, American, um, you know, industry. And then the, the, all the media run headlines, um, Trump says if he's not re-elected, there'll be a bloodbath. I mean, how I know, dishonest can it, you get? And what was scary to me is all the media ran exactly the same headline, like robots. Just like they've done yeah. now. Just exactly <laughs> like they've done now with yeah. Winston. Like robots, all the same headlines. Yeah, I, uh, honestly, thank God for the XA. Oh, just, thank God for uh, Elon Musk for freeing it. It cost him $44 billion, but it's the best money he's ever spent, mate. Oh, I think so. But you know, I hope they look after him. Yeah, so Winston's, I don't know, where's he found his power, Cameron? I don't know. How old is Winston? Is he 80? Uh, no, he's not. He's in his 70s, but he can, you know, foot it with the best of them for hours and hours on end. I've never seen anything like it. But no, you know, I think he's really smart. Eh? Well, I, you know, I was talking to him in March last year, so a year ago, and I said to him, "Are, yeah. you, are you fit for the election campaign?" And he says, oh, "I can't wait, can't wait to get into it. And this is what I love. This is what I'm good at." And he had a real fire in his belly. And since the election, we've seen that fire, and we're seeing it on a daily basis. And and it's also infecting the rest of the New Zealand First Party because you're seeing that with Shane Jones, you're seeing that with Tanya Ankovic. And, and other people in the New Zealand First team, they they really are firing, and they're you know being sensible and and saying and doing the right things. And people, I think people are starting to realise. Hang on a second, when there's something here. Well, I think yeah, you're right. Winston just feeds it off the energy of this, you know, this success and speeches and 
packed out halls and good poles. It just it just energizes them big time, eh? Yeah, Guess totally. It must, success always energizes people, but the problem we got is the mainstream media gatekeepers, eh? For our sides, totally, totally. You know, it's such a hard thing to get through when you you know when you do a good popular speech and pack out a hall, and then you get all these crappy headlines that just. Yeah, but he's dominating the media cycle for, for a good long time. So he'll be pleased. He'll be pleased by this. I mean, we, we just had yeah, him on we just had him on earlier and um and he's very pleased. So, you know, um it shows. Anyway, Jimmy, I better I better cut a track and uh better wind the show up. Uh, okay. it's been a pleasure. I'll talk to you again next week. Thanks, Cam. Okay, mate. See Thanks, you. Mate. Cheers. Yet again, there's no holding back from my buddies. Plenty of truth bombs dropped. If only the other media would listen to what the ordinary person says in the street. Maybe we should change the name for Cam's Buddies to Cam's Common Sense Buddies. Tell us your thoughts on Cam's Buddies by emailing inbox at realitycheck.radio or text to 2057. Thanks for tuning in to RCR, Reality Check Radio. Do you like what you're listening to or dislike what you're listening to? Either way, we want to hear from you. Get in touch with us now. You can text us with your message to 2057. That's 2057. Or email us at inbox at realitycheck.radio. We'd love to hear from you. So connect with us today.